Okay. All right, here we go. Um, Marie's going to be my co-host tonight. Hello, and welcome to the American Promise uh, Training for Action series. My name is Laura Nittmeyer, and I'm the volunteer state coordinator for American Promise in California. Um, American Promise is a national cross-partisan network of citizens working to ratify a 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to end outsized influence of global corporations and other wealthy concentrated interests in American politics. I'm hosting this organizing events for action team call. So welcome to new and returning members. Um, the purpose of this organizing events team is first of all, to inspire you uh, in spreading our message and getting people into action to win the 28th amendment through organizing events. Secondly, to help you become a more confident and articulate uh, event organizer for our work. And thirdly, to provide a structure of ongoing support to assist you in succeeding all manner of holding events. So in just a minute, we're gonna go around um, uh, for introductions. And if you just check your name on Zoom and you know how to change it, um, go ahead and add your city uh, uh, next to your name so we can all see it. Um, thanks a lot. Some of us have, some of it has, um, yeah, mine should say California. All right, at least I'm in San Anselmo. All right. Um, tonight's session is actually the fourth call in this event series, um, but there have also been uh, five types of action teams this past year. And the other topics covered there um, our friend banking, getting elected officials to act, writing letters to the editor, and social media. And each of these teams has recorded some fantastic work. And we'll copy and paste the sign up page um, for these in the chat right now. Um, Marie, I don't know. If, can you see it now? You can see it fine. Good. Okay. All right. What you'll find in each of these teams is we try to focus on doing, you know, working through timely, real world um, action that we're taking, uh, writing, preparing in the moment um, so that they're productive hours. Um, you can help build uh, these teams by making sure that people in your chapter and other people that you know who want to make a difference um, know about these uh, action team opportunities and have the link in order to sign up. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about events in the 2022, um, events in 2022 leading up to the election in November. So if we could say the last events call, the last event, the last call we had um, before the end of the year, which was actually the November call, that call could have been entitled planning, you know, working for, uh, working our, our 2022 calendars, you know, ahead of time. Um, so if that was the plan and call, tonight's call could be called candidates. Um, I'm saying that because just remembering that we're working for cross-partisan support for our amendment. So that this means that we're, we're never actually working for specific candidates, but there's so much we can do right now to make a big voting issue of the root problem we face, money and politics and 28th Amendment, um, and the 28th Amendment uh, to the Constitution in order to fix it. In our 10-year plan for the amendment, passage of the amendment language by Congress is needed in 2022 or 2023. So, um, and then that'll be followed by ratification in 38 states uh, according to the timeline by 2026. So that means that this year, um, every single congressional seat and the stance of the candidate that fills it matters a lot. Um, now events themselves, what we mean by events is a broad range of ideas uh, in order to bring the public process to bear um, on winning the 28th amendment. Uh, so we'll get into uh, a number of examples 
Here's the agenda for tonight's call. First of all, we'll introduce ourselves. We'll just say very quickly, name, you know, where you're from, state, city, like that. And then tonight I'd like to ask you if you know, just say if you know um, that your congressional districts have changed in 2022 or not. You don't have to say how, <laughs> that's a detailed conversation. We won't be having time for that, but it's an important thing to know. So if you know, just mention, you know. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do in the call is we're gonna brainstorm on three different areas. First of all, events around candidates, um, key dates for intentional timing for our work uh, between now and the election, and then the key relationships. Um, events around candidates, um, this could mean how to leverage candidate races, prioritize them if you need be, if you have a big stay like I do, getting pledges, where to meet candidates, um, how to leverage our own events or those um, by, by others that are the most impactful that we could each undertake. Um, when we're finished, we'll put it all together and I'll ask a couple of volunteers to just uh, talk about those three aspects, right? Um, a few volunteers can say event, key dates for that, uh, for that event, planning that event, media around that event, communications around that event, and relationships that we need in order to make that particular event a success. This team meeting is conversational. So whenever you wanna say something, you just raise your reel <laughs> or electronic. If you mute yourself, if you're not talking, we just cut down on the background noise. Uh, thanks for that. So let's begin. Introductions first. Top of my screen is Leela. Go for it. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leela. I live in San Francisco. I get to do a lot of um, thinking and doing with Laura which is nice. And I should know if my district has changed. I don't think it has, but they just came out with um, the new lines recently. So I will find out soon. Right, right. So what Leela is addressing here is um, in our state, um, we've been following what happened with the, um, with the census and the congressional lines. So whereas we may not know individually if our home districts have changed, what we see is complete redraws, right? By um, a, a, a balanced panel um, for the state of California. In some cases, entire counties are in different districts. So whatever we were planning two years ago with candidate pledge, et cetera, um, we have a lot of work to do ahead of time. And that's why we're getting started now. Okay, who's next? I'll go next. Hi, I'm uh, John Palmer. I'm a uh, longtime electoral reform advocate, or democracy reform advocate. I've been doing a lot of stuff with my choice voting um, and whatnot, but I've been a huge supporter of American Promise um, since its early days. Uh, most recently, I'm supporting um, with Jeff uh, uh, the um, effort that they've got going in Maine to try to pass an initiative to get foreign money uh, out of Maine. To outlaw foreign money. That's one touch point for the promise recently. I live in San Francisco. I, I work in, in private equity um, as a day job. I'm sort of clamping down a little bit from that, so spending a little more time on democracy reform stuff. Um, as far as my districts, I'm the rare San Francisco person that Jackie Spear is my representative, and she's retiring. I don't know if the line has been withdrawn. Um, so this, you know, that district is moving away from us or not, but I would guess it stays in Democrat hands, which probably means it's not a, a you know, worry for us in terms of you know, getting this to work. Okay, who's next? I'll go, Laura. Yeah, sure. um, Marie Hetzelder-Kimmel, I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. 
one of the co-founders of uh, what's called the Tri-County um, American Promise New, um, New Jersey chapter, and now kind of coordinator for the, uh, the New Jersey state um, chapters have come together as a state, like most of the states. Um, our districts have been redrawn. My particular district has not, but we address three districts primarily, our, our chapter people address three, three districts primarily, and two of the three have significantly changed. One that's going to make it easy. Actually, both of them are going to make it easier for the other two Congress people to stay in power. Um, one that's good. The other one, it's not maybe so good because he did support previously and changed parties and now has not so far co-sponsored. So we'll be you know, actively trying to get candidate pledges in mm -hmm. all of those districts. Yep, good. Sam? Uh, Sam Daly Harris. And starting yesterday, I live in Hollywood Beach, Florida for the next two months, but I'm normally in Princeton, New Jersey. I actually don't know how my district has changed, but I do know that there's a bipartisan commission mm -hmm. and the Republicans are complaining about how the, uh, the districts were drawn, but I'm not clear about the complaints yet. Right. I'll take this opportunity to urge everyone to read lots and lots of coverage about what happened with the implementation of new district lines. Leela and I were following this closely since November, and we knew that the approval wasn't going to come until December 27th. So we read a lot of coverage that said um, the commission looked very balanced, it looked like there were going to be the same number of close districts, which is what we had worked on with Canada Pledge for the last election. And, um, and since, since December 27th, the press that I've seen has been uh, a little bit different than that. So um, check around your media sources, <laughs> read more than just one before you think it's good, it's bad, it's changed, it's not, it's fair, it's whatever, check around. Okay, um, Barbara and Steve Miller from New Jersey. I were, uh... Steve and Barbara Miller from uh, Haddonfield, New Jersey, right down the road from Marie. Uh, I think our district is, like she said, it's stable, but the, there have been some redrawing in, in New Jersey, which we'll have to catch up on. Mm -hmm. No, it's good for state strategy. Very important thing to know right now. How about Nancy? Hey, everybody. Nancy Morgan from Virginia. I'm the coordinator for the Virginia chapter of American Promise. Um, yeah, in Virginia, it's been sort of a nightmare because we actually changed our constitution so we could have, a, it's not an independent commission, but a bipartisan commission. And then that commission meant it met and there is nothing, a nonpartisanship doesn't exist. So everybody walked out of the room after four months and we had no map. So they went to the Virginia Supreme Court that just released them like last week. So mm -hmm. I'm in the same districts. I think we're on the congressional side, it's not that big of a change. Some of the boundaries switched, but on the state side, in terms of our House of Delegates and senatorial, there's gonna be a lot of uh, problems because of uh, incumbents being grouped in the same area. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a real challenge to work that out. Yeah, and uh, it takes time to look at all that, you know, ahead of any uh, elections you might be planning around events around. So. Yeah, that's why we're talking about it. Thank you. Hey, Hank. Hi. Okay, so um, Michigan. Uh, well, first off, um, my group, Michiganders for Fair and Transparent Elections, are in the capital area of Lansing. Um, and we have folks from other parts of the state. And, and I'm kind of standing in for John uh, Dispelder, who's been our coordinator for the state. In any event, lots has happened to Michigan's boundaries. Our uh, Citizens Redistricting Commission has just completed its work. And of course, we started out with the necessity of turning 14 congressional districts into 13 congressional districts. Hmm, and so between those two forces, every district has changed significantly. Mm -hmm. And particularly in the Detroit area, significantly enough that we are getting some back backlash uh, from folks uh, in Detroit in the African American community because there are no longer uh, intentionally gerrymandered districts to make sure there is a 
uh, a black member of the legislature that will inevitably get elected. Um, and so, and, and the, the pushback, and part of that was done as a result of some of the uh, voting rights legislation over the years. And uh, so anyway, there's a lot of noise over that. And then they just filed their suit. Um, I don't know how long the courts are gonna to take to resolve it, because obviously there are a whole lot of people that are, you know, got the bit in their teeth and are ready to run on the new, the new maps, um, the changes, the new districts and the, the, the principles behind them and so forth at the state house and Senate level have also produced significant changes. Mm -hmm. I haven't done uh, a lot of look-see at that just yet, but I have looked at my state rep and my senators and they've been gored. Um, what's happened is my rep um, uh, had her district cut in half um, and the North End included a whole bunch of rural stuff north of us and the South half of what was her district. And by the way, these cuts are bigger than her former district, but it's where she now ends. Um, yeah. And, and the, the Southern one goes all the way to the bottom of the, the county, brings in all kinds of conservatives. So she, she went from a pretty reliably safe district to a fight no matter which one she chooses um, because they wanted to make districts competitive mm -hmm. and it looks like they did. And so you know, Hank, you, what you have is an opportunity to get, get candidate pledges on both sides for the new districts, right? It's I, what, what's happened with you is very similar to what happened to many districts in California because we also lost the congressional seat, not because California wasn't growing, but because we weren't growing as much as some other states, which grew a lot. Sure. So it's awesome that you're on top of it. You know, yes. it's, you know what's happened. And wow. now the rest is, you know, figuring out, out the new, you know, the new players, the new issues and making sure that candidates on all sides are aware of what we're doing and that the voters are thinking about uh, this when they place their ballot in November. And now we have Jana. Hi, Jana, hey. from Oakland, California. Uh, I'm relatively new to American Promise, uh, marketing professional by day, uh, and happy to be here. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Um, next, remember we said we were going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about events around candidates, key dates, and key relationships. So the first thing, getting the first thing together is. Um, let's talk about, uh, throw out our ideas about how we can have and participate in events around candidates. This means, could mean finding them, contacting them, meeting them, pledging them. Um, these can be your own events or those planned by other groups. They could be affairs. There could be candidate uh, appearances. We want to leverage uh, those most imp impactful actions we can um, we can each undertake. So, if anybody has something in mind specifically, let's mention it. Mention it right now. What are you guys thinking of? So, Laura, we have um, uh, Joan DeVore and Ronnie Fernandez, um, some of our longtime members. Who um, and Ronnie actually ran as an independent for um, a Senate seat that was open in um, 2020 here in New Jersey. Um, they are starting to coordinate a panel of um, candidates and have them um, a, like a forum on money and politics um, as a way and trying and trying to really make it bipartisan and try to get a number of people involved in terms of. Uh, and it's probably going to be an online event because it's we're hoping to draw people from various parts of the state. And it, it's possible if that goes well that we'll try to hold a, a few of those mm -hmm. um, to focus on our candidate pledge, getting our candidate pledges. Excellent. That's a that's a big one. But these can be impactful, big or small. Remember, and we don't have to be doing them. We don't have to be hosting all of them or doing all the organizing um, uh, ourselves. What else might come to mind as a way to, to interact with candidates or put our issue in front of candidates or the public that way? 
Um, I, I was talking to Vicki today in our, our Tuesday uh, leaders call. And one of the things that I really liked that she did last year was the fairs, the mm -hmm. county fairs. And so we were talking about the problem solving caucus. And I think that Hank brought it up, I think in this December or something, because Michigan has a bunch of them. And I realized there's one Republican from Virginia who was down sort of in the Southwest. So I was, we're having our meeting tomorrow and we're doing some quarterly planning. And, um, for, you know, the uh, county fairs happen in the summer. So um, I'd like to focus on targeting him as a, mm -hmm. one of the problem solver, uh, members of the problem solver caucus and try to build up his constituent, members of his constituents will, who will engage with them um, through the fair venue. Mm -hmm. um, if I might, um... Nancy, given that you have thought about uh, pursuing the member of Congress that's on the Problem Solvers Caucus, uh, there is a conference call that, that Jeff is setting up uh, for the 12th. I don't know if you've been aware of it. Um, I, and I think it's like at 445, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I think we probably ought to invite you into that planning session because we're trying to figure out how to really mobilize our organization's resources to come at the problem solvers from as many directions as we can. Yeah, Vicki just sent me the link and stuff. So I, I'm gonna, that's great. I think okay, that's good. a great entry. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. very good, very good. Remember, even if we find um, relationships between um, problem solvers that we find uh, in any state, um, we can send that information and find constituents in those districts as well, uh, which can be important, you know, uh, links to get work done even outside of our own home states. Hey, hey Laura, uh, if, if it would be deemed appropriate, I'd like to ask Marie to elaborate a little bit on the, the um, for, candidate forums that she's kind of thinking about. Specifically, how does the, what's how does the agenda flow and, and what is the, how much, how much direction is the candidates given, you know, how's, how's the conversation controlled, et cetera. How do you see that? Because it sounds interesting. I just, I've always struggled with how to, you know, the, the fight between just let them loose and let them talk about their woes as opposed to taking it as an opportunity to make the case to the people who come about what the reality is bigger than just the candidates themselves. Um, the, there's, um, this has really just started with uh, the, the two, like I said, Ronnie and um, Joan, and they're sort of, they're heading it up. Um, so we haven't gotten to actually setting up the, um, the agenda for it, but I, um, you know, a little bit of what we've spoken about already is maybe having sort of a, um, an outline of what our questions are going to be get an idea of the experience that any of the candidates have had so far with money in politics, uh, what not only what their concerns may be about, you know, for their constituencies, but also um, potential constituencies, but also their own personal uh, experiences with money right. in politics, how, you know, of course, certainly the independents don't have the big, you know, the big sources. Uh, you know, Democrats have to raise a certain amount of money before they can get the attention of the DCCC to buy in, to support yeah. them, um, you know, yada, yada, yada. So those are the kinds of things we want to explore. So you, like you said, it's not just to get their personal opinions about it, but also to have um, our attendees see, wow, this really has a lot of effects on who can run and how they have to run and how much time they have to put in. Yeah. It's also a terrific uh, mechanism for keeping things really cross-partisan um, because even just meeting with Republican members of Congress, just asking them, how do you feel about money and politics? Oh my goodness, everybody hates money and, and politics. Just letting them talk about their own experience is a deeply humanizing uh, for, for those of us, if, even if you're not, don't feel that that uh, friendly, or in my case, a little bit scared about uh, opening the, you know, uh, the, opening the, the box uh, in that conversation. It, it's not difficult to get a very meaningful conversation with a simple question like that. Yeah, yeah. 
What about what about other kinds of events? We've just talked about some pretty complicated things. Oh, the other one, Hank, by the way, you just made, reminded me that uh, you know that in Ohio, and maybe you could talk to um, to Ted uh, Knapke about this. They tried hard to get a cross-partisan uh, panel put together, and they weren't able to hold those um, uh, because their uh, their their local uh, party organizations wouldn't allow candidates to appear. Uh, to talk even about this very narrow um, in this very narrow conversation, but um, I know there was a lot of organizing about that. Um, so that's another another resources for something that was ser seriously planned, you know, two years ago. Yeah. Okay. But low hanging fruit. How do we get it? How do we get our hands around the candidates? How do we get to them, one way or another? Meet them, find them, reach them on the phone. One of the um, one of the suggestions that have have come up from the um, from our getting elected officials to act team is um, to have somebody in your group assigned to follow the social media mm -hmm. of whether it be the congressperson that you're trying to make a relationship with or in this case the candidate so that you can see when they have something planned that's out in the community and you could potentially go out and possibly, you know, meet them and maybe start a little relationship with, um, with them. I mean, that's actually how I started with Andy Kim, um, who's now second in a second term in, in New Jersey third, um, that I first met him out at a, uh, it was a, a, a demonstration or a rally about, if I'm not mistaken, it might've been the tax cut or maybe it was healthcare, but I met him there and started to talk to him because I knew he said he was gonna run. And I said, well, what do you think about money and politics? And I saw him at some other events. And then eventually in the summer of um, 2017, because they started in 2018 actually in Congress, um, the 20, yeah, uh, he was actually, you know, at a point where we got him to sign, we met with him actually sitting down meeting with him and got him to sign the candidate pledge. So that, you know, we sort of evolved through the networking and then got the relationship where he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna sit down with you. And yes, I'm signing the candidate pledge. Right, so there's a great example of just doing a little bit of research about the candidates, finding them on their, absolutely they're having their own events, they're having their own appearances, they're going everywhere. So, and that's published <laughs> ahead of time. They want you to go there for just that reason. Um, I did that with my own member of Congress. I have never had a formal meeting with him. Uh, he's been as um, supportive of the amendment, was a co-sponsor in the last, not the currently time, I have to get on him about that. But uh, in the previous session, he co-sponsored uh, before. I went to a town hall. I had my, my packet uh, ready and available there were, you know there were a couple hundred people there so I didn't speak with them directly but just being able to hand the packet to a staffer at an event wow I mean I got a I got a call back they called me I mean I felt like I have um, a regular relationship with the office just by showing up with the paper in my hand when I was at his own town hall event so that's the kind of thing if you have it in mind I'm targeting this person I want to get this thing in front of them um, you know, it's a, sometimes it's a bit of a chasing game with some some candidates, right? Uh, John and I, John Palmer and I both had the same experience in the candidate pledge thing we did last uh, last election. It was a matter of calling, 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 calling. You know, the the tenth call, whoever was the you know the the staffer the, there or the phone new phone number doesn't work. And because it's, remember, it's not, it's not the congressional office, even if they're in office, it's their campaign uh, number that you're talking to. So it's a completely different um, social situation or event consideration than you would have in the normal course of business. It's very different from getting officials, uh, getting elected officials to act because there you have a formalized mechanism for going through uh, the elected office. When you're going through the campaigns, it's a uh, well, it's uh, a lot easier in some ways, <laughs> or or harder depending on whether or not pick somebody picks up the phone. Hopefully, they want to get elected. Yeah. Who's got another idea about 
how to get to candidates or do events around candidates. Something else? No, sorry, uh, Laura, just playing off of what you just said, I mean, you mentioned when I had a little bit of success in uh, getting somebody in. in. In my example, I forget who my guy was running against. Greg Rass was his name. He was running mm -hmm. a famous Democrat or fairly high profile Democrat. Do you remember, Laura? Anyway, yes. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Um, well known Democrat in Southern California. Anyway. Yeah. Rightly pointed out and well funded. <laughs> pointed out that this was an angle for the guy, the Republican, running against her, and um, and that turned out to be right. And and you know he didn't get elected, but you know there may be more Democrats, there may be more Republicans going after Democrat seats this time around. That that you know may have the cycle is in their favor. Mm -hmm. Going after those guys with that same angle, they're in your district or not, is, I think, a you know, pretty good idea. Um, I mean, that was a good idea. And, and you know, I reached out and said, hey, we need an angle here. And you know, you're up against somebody that's well funded. Take a look at our stuff. And really, you know, the hardest part was getting a hold of the guy. He got a hold of the guy, he took the American Thomas stuff in front of him, and he did, you know, and, and, and he committed to it. He signed and he put his picture on the American Thomas website. You know, so all of a sudden you had a Republican. Now he didn't get elected, but you get enough of them that that approach um, you know, make a difference. So mm -hmm. this is their cycle, right? Right. And we, we know how to do it, so we're going to really scale it up this time. So and one of, the, one of the things that should help with the Republicans this time around, too, is that, um, you know, American Promise just co, they were co-sponsors or coordinators of some way with ALEC um, right. for, in December. For it was state legislators of the, of both parties were invited. I'm not sure how many Democratic state legislators showed up, but of course there were numbers of Republicans, and um, they had a session that they presented the information about the uh, their, the for our freedom amendment they're calling it with a slightly more conservative language and had a good response. And there was a, um, um, a Je Jeff is putting together some information that we can use to present to Republicans that we approach to say, you know, American promises work with Alec, you know, and, and, and that's going to be an, you know, that's going to get you a little bit more cachet too with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yep. Open, that, open some more doors. Um, we, just so we don't run out of time here, let's move on to key dates. The idea here is that we have intentional timing of quite a few things. Um, the most important thing probably is our development of uh, media. So in this case, if you're having an event, if you're going to an event, if you're planning an event, you can actually do um, media work before, during, after events. But there could be a lot of other important key dates for you that are going to vary a lot by state. So I thought we might spend this moment not to just focus on the fact that the election, you know, November 1st, the first Tuesday uh, in November, is actually not the key date, right? Uh, we, as we learned last time, when we're all mailing in ballots, the cutoff is three weeks before that when people are mailing their ballots. Everybody's made their decision already. So that really compresses the timeline for short. Um, but there are many others. Um, does anything come to mind for you guys? Any important dates for you? Okay. Primaries. Who knows what their primary date is? Thank you, Marie. Yeah. It's early. Is that a question? Yeah, who's, what is your primary? It could be actually, it could be a lot sooner than you think. Probably on June, the first Tuesday in June in, in mm -hmm. Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michigan is first Tuesday in August. Wow, late. Yeah, presidential year, it's in March, but non-presidential, it's in August. 
Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Ours is June seventh. Um, I would say the, the one of the reasons that we care about that so much is that um, not so much whether the the primaries are important in a way as a part of a strategy. Um, not so much that the districts may flip, although that may be flip parties. That may be the case for some districts in California, because we, that happens every time, you know, seven this year, 11 next year, that's just the normal swing of things. But who's actually running in the primaries? Like the date of the Republican primary could turn out to be the most important thing if you're in a likely Republican district. Um, and that's where I found myself in New Jersey all the time for, for 30 years. The Republican primary was the most important date on the calendar because whoever prevailed in the primary ultimately was elected. So in order to put our, our issue before voters, that winds up being the key date for the 2022 election for the federal offices. If we think about media though, what other key dates may be in mind? Are you going to send something out ahead of an event? Like if you're holding a, uh, if you're holding the panel, when are you gonna start publicity on that? That could be a key date. Generally, my experience has been the logistics to lead up to that. You need about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have in previous uh, events calls talked about the um, the timeline and the checklist, which has some recommended times. Um, other key dates may be actually getting your panel members. Some of the people you might want to have on the panel just may not be available uh, if you check their calendar even now. Trust me, they all have their 22 calendars. They know what the 22, 2022 calendar is. Um, and if you're not on it, a key date may be um, getting your, your name or your event nailed down right now so that you're sure to get them. Any kind of specialized speaker is going to be that way. Right, Sam? I, I just also want to throw out that a key date is right now if it's an open seat, if it's a candidate who's not an incumbent, if yeah. it's a district that's shifted, those kinds of folks are hungry for someone to talk to now. Right now. It gets more crowded in May or June or July. So just at the level of uh, reaching out, trying to communicate, it may be disorganized now because they're just piecing together a campaign but it's uh, in some other levels, I think a little more open and porous uh, because fewer people are knocking on the door. Now. Right, right, agreed, agreed. Um, so, so we don't run out of time to put these things together. Let's move on now to key relationships. Um, before we start this, um, I, I'd like to ask everyone just to write down three ideas that you may have for folks who will be um, essential to the success of an event um, that you may have in mind, even if the event itself is not, is one that you're actually attending and not putting together, like organizing yourself, not necessarily, we tend to overlook these. Um, there could be anyone from uh, other partners in your group, uh, collaborators, um, editors, uh, that you'd like to, um, uh, where you would like to get pieces published uh, or uh, publicity about events that you may be running. Um, it could also be people who are running uh, venues in your community. Um, what comes to mind for me is uh, there's a lovely woman I've been trying to meet for a long time who runs a movie theater in Albany, California, where they get some great, showing some great films. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, that place has been uh, been closed until recently, but it's open now, <laughs> and now's the time for me to call her. So um, that's an example. Just jot, jot down three, and then um, we'll talk about that for a few minutes, and then we'll pull it all together by talking about an event, a key date, and a key relationship 
um, in order to bring this, uh, these make these examples move from a concept to a, a reality that where we can talk about uh, real events for the first time. Let me throw this one thing out for just one second, sorry. Um, a lot of times a very key stop for candidates is the editorial board of key newspapers mm -hmm. who then later recommend this person for the Republican primary and this person for the Democratic primary. Having conversations with editorial writers who interview candidates to make, their, the be off soon. to make their decisions, who to endorse, getting them to to make this one of their key questions um, could be a very powerful trim tab uh, mm -hmm. kind of action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot too because um, we put out a press release after we had completed um, our work last time. And what I think is gonna be more useful just harkening back to our discussion about the key dates. What I think would be a lot more useful this time in order to cover a state as large as the one we have is to publicize that we're the work that we're planning to do, right? We're planning to get, we're, we're trying to get an answer out of 108 candidates, all the federal congressional candidates, 104 of them, plus people that are running for governor, plus the Senate seat. So um, just the information and an exam, we have the press release we did last time, right? It's not like we're starting from a blank sheet of paper. We've actually done this work before and now there are changes. So just to put that in somebody's, um, uh, the, in terms of the editorial uh, uh, board or writers, and it, just to put that in front of them now, it means that the next time we have this conversation is not going to be the first time, right? It's building a relationship with them, which is uh, what we didn't have time to do last time because it was our first time, but now we do. And so that's something that we're really talking about. Okay, so who's got a list of their three most important uh, people that they have for pulling off events in the coming in this year? They had a couple in mind. Well, I guess I can talk of, you know, focusing on the county fair, if we want to identify in a couple counties in the specific sixth district where this Republican is, is would be try to identify local partners and groups because it's in a it's it's probably about four hours from where we are in Northern Virginia. Right. And um, local partners, and and um, also just see if we can find officials who might be interested in, as well as journalists. And going back to Sam's thing, I think that um, journalists are an amazing source, you know, uh, for for our activities. I we just organized a press conference today and some polling we did. I sent out invitations to ten journalists, and four of them attended. So, awesome. That was just great. Um, yeah, and once uh, we, and these are these are it, these relationships don't go away after one event. So that's really it's exciting. So um, that and I think the county fair thing we have to we have to plan on it. You know when they organize the county fairs, but as as um, Vicky said today, you have to start planning on it now. Yeah. Like no, no, no. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Marie, you've got some relationships that you're working on? Um, yeah, in terms of um, editorial board relationship, um, that sort of started with um, working with um, Representative, again, Representative Kim's office to get his um, Constitution Day um, editorial uh, op-ed, excuse me, published. Um, so I, I got to talk to the editor who said, well, that's not really my field. This is the editor you want to talk to for that, for, you know, op-eds. But then I got to speak to her too. So I, I, you know, kind of started a relationship, both of those places. Um, and um, in my group um, for uh, part of what's important about this candidate pledge work is to have 
sort of a worksheet, a spreadsheet to, to work from to say, who are the candidates? What contacts have we made? What follow-up needs to be done? Um, and follow up then if hopefully there is a pledge that, that it gets sent into American Promise and the graphics get done and so on. So Liz um, Makita is our guru at that sort of thing. She does not like to talk in meetings and she does not like to write letters to the editor, but she's a guru when it comes to doing that sort of thing. So, um, you know, she's gonna be a key person to be start, you know, to start our whole ball rolling. And, and we've talked about this a little bit preliminarily in December. Now we, you know, we have to get our, her whole planning together. Most excellent. I'm gonna say that one of my most important people actually is Leela. <laughs> we get together and because we did this last time and uh, John has uh, jumped off, but uh, last time he was awesome also on working on so many of the districts. Um, we do have to prioritize our work. And so in order to do that, um, we, we get together uh, a couple of Sundays a month just for an hour to go over the details of what it is we're planning, how we're documenting it. Leela started actually making um, uh, making new uh, new tabs on the candidate pledge spreadsheet that we have for the detailed research that we have um, on things that we are thinking are going to be close districts. Um, so we don't have to go go back and revisit this you know, like over and over and over. There's there's a a, a, set, a central spreadsheet where any volunteer that shows up can work on one district, one candidate, take 10, you know, take as many as you can do. Um, it just can be able to get together and talk through with some another person. What do you think is the right thing? You know, what can you look at this? Uh, can you look this over? Um, having a, a, a regular a regular partner is a very uh, powerful, uh, powerful thing. And we're both really excited about um, taking up the work and then the coming year. So let's put this, try to put this all together. Maybe if anybody has, can I get one volunteer now to talk about um, uh, these three aspects? If you could just say your event, let's say a key date for it or key relationships to make your event success. Um, it would be great if we could get two or three examples before we have to close. Does anybody have something in mind? Uh, my guess would be, you know, thinking for what I've heard my colleagues say in some of our past meetings, I suspect the, the forum for candidates may be um, maybe the best, the most logical thing for us to do, particularly given all the redistricting that's happening people looking for exposure to, even with the incumbents, they're looking for exposure to people they've never had to talk to before. Mm -hmm. um, and so then it comes down to a question of, of do we want to try to do it for each congressional district? Um, uh, or do we want to kind of pick a region of the state? I think just in, sh in terms of logistics, trying to do 13 of these things between now and November given uh, we're not exactly an army of a thousand, um, it's probably not realistic. And we probably need to, you know, shoot for, I think particularly with, I mean, it would be, it would be nice if we could do a mix of in, in person and, and Zoom to people who can't make it. And right. in, my, in my mind's eye with um, Michigan's numbers are just horrendous um, in terms of COVID. I think the earliest date is April. Um, if you want to do anything on the outside and have anybody show up besides people who want to just make a lot of noise. Um, and there are plenty of those in Michigan. And so, so, so Hank, if you're going to do an, uh, let's say the, for the very, uh, a very first, let's say early and highly prioritized event panel, what would be a key date for you? And what would be a key relationship in order to make that event a success? Um, Key, well, key date, my guess is given April 15th, probably smart to do it after that, uh, towards the end of the month, um, as to where, uh, I don't know, I've, I've got to talk to some other people. Um, 
Sure. Uh, as well as I think the other thing that would kind of help make it is taking a look at uh, who are the uh, registered candidates um, Absolutely. in those elections. Um, so, and that we won't know that for another few weeks. Um, in fact, one of the perplexing, confusing elements for us right now is the lawsuit. Um, right. What, what does that mean to people taking seriously the new districts? I, I haven't a clue. Um, the lawsuit was just announced yesterday. So, you know, once we know yeah. when that shoe drops, I think we can start thinking sure. in terms in terms of where. What if you use what if you use sort of like what Sam said, where um, right now candidates are kind of hungry to get their names out there and you know get their voices out there? What if you use the fact that the districts really aren't set and this lawsuit has thrown a monkey wrench into the works to say, well, we're really not focused on you know second district or the fourth district or whatever, but get some candidates who may or may not be running against each other, but kind mm -hmm. of just running and just talk and just you can still approach them and well, what's your position on this? And, you know, have you had experience with this before? Have you run before? What do you anticipate to be the problems now? And still cover money and politics and start a relationship for a candidate pledge, but not necessarily have to have those answers from the lawsuit and the actual districts that they're gonna run in. Right, not, well, everything, has to, not everything has to be nailed down for sure. Right. Let me give you a quick example. Um, for pulling these three uh, items together and perhaps a simpler thing than having um, the, the gold standard, having a candidate panel, because that's a pretty complicated um, uh, thing to do, but a, a great one, of course, the super great. Um, one example is that um, a member of my group um, would really like to hold a virtual movie night. And um, he's thinking of short, showing perhaps a short, a video about money and politics. We know there are lots of those good ones out there, right? Little short ones. Um, and then getting a discussion on the role. Um, and he's thinking that um, what was certainly going to come up as the role of pharma and vaccine policy, for example, is a very hot topic um, among everyone he encounters in his rural Republican community. Many of his friends um, support the amendment. And um, these relationships are key for him. Uh, getting this done before the Republican primary um, or getting at least the views of the Republican candidates um, out into the media uh, is, a, is a very key date um, because it's one of those situations where it's likely one of those candidates will prevail um, in, um, in his congressional district. That would be a huge one for us if he were able to prevail. So there we have. A fairly simple event, right? Because it's a uh, it's planned to be virtual. He's not thinking that he's going to be able to get folks together in person that way. Um, it doesn't have to be a large event either, but it, it could wind up being um, uh, very important in mobilizing, um, you know, Republicans in rural uh, California uh, to take this um, this to make this a much bigger voting issue than it was, you know, before <laughs> before this year. Um, is there someone else that has a, an example, combination of uh, very, just think very simply, uh, any kind of event, any date that's attached to it, and anything that you need in order to get the relationship that you might need and may not have today, uh, where the where's work to be done? Actually, um, I'd just like to make a comment about that. I think Actually, what Laura's suggestion is probably the easiest suggestion. I mean, we had great success with showing dark money yeah. before, before the primary in local libraries and bringing candidates in and they were happy to come in to get the publicity. And it, it was very easy to organize. Mm -hmm. um, some of these other things I think are much more complicated, but that's a good, good example. Do something simple. That, mm -hmm allows people to get visibility but bring I have a together. I have a suggestion it's not a documentary but I don't know if any of you um saw the movie Irresistible with Steve Carell last year yeah. you know did you I I had not seen it it was sort of on my radar but I just saw it over the weekend and um it's just to, to not be a complete spoiler it's the 
the story of a uh, democratic strategy strategist who decides he's going to go he sees somebody on a video that's gone to a town hall and says that's the kind of a candidate that we need you know because it's a, the situation that a republican has just won the white house so the democrats want to get somebody who's going to appeal to the grassroots and he goes out and he's going to bring this guy up through he wants to get him a uh, elected as mayor and then the Republican strategists come in and start pouring money in and it's this whole unbelievable conflagration of money in this little town in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. 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 Yeah. yeah and then there's a twist at the end. Um, That's so funny. It's it great. Is, isn't it? So it's an hour and 40 minutes. It's a little longer than Dark Money was if I remember because when we did we did Dark Money a number of times I think it was like only an hour and 15. Exactly. But, um, so and it's, but it could be it could be any of the remember there's a whole American Promise YouTube and I just wanted to mention that as we as we we close the call again um, uh, before we adjourn um, I'll remind you about there are um, um, the link to sign up on the other monthly meetings in this action series and you can see from this discussion um, how. Uh, uh, how the different action teams reinforce this work, right? Friend banking brings you, um, helps you foster those key relationships. Letters to the editor and social media are the vehicles for communicating before, during, after your well-planned event, large or small, um, getting elected officials to act. Um, there we have um, those that move candidates from skeptical to supporter or from supporter to champion. Um, all to be sure that the elected, the, uh, elected officials that we ultimately have work to get uh, our amendment passed. Um, so um, I just want to close by saying uh, thank you so much for attending the organizing events for action team uh, call tonight. And we hope this discussion will launch many of your successes for events in the coming year. And you can find uh, the recording of this, uh, this call, as well as other trainings on the American Promise uh, YouTube channel. The next events call is planned for the first Tuesday of the month, February 1st at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And it's great, it's great to be partners with you in this work. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you all. Laura, I just want to add really quickly, um, it is a priority uh, um, in speaking with Jeff, uh, working, getting some training out and do some or organizing so that groups, chap uh, state chapters can start really working on the candidate pledge. There's going to be some trainings coming to be announced, um, you know, to sort of reorient people to maybe some best practices about a spreadsheet for candidates or you right. know, following up or yada, yada, yada. So that look for that. It's going to come this yeah. This, and in, this month to beginning can, of next month. If you can't find that, remember Ishwari did the original training in July of the 2020. And that was the one that inspired us to get going. So in a few months time, we were able to publish our work on 28 candidates. So we know how to do it and we're doing it again. Oh, Have so fun, Laura, everyone. Laura, can you send us your press release thing? That you I will. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Will do. Right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.